Good morning, biscuits. Are you taking this Sunday to do the lawn like I am? Oh my goodness. So I let the back lawn grow way too high. This was like three, three and a half weeks worth of growth between mowings. And we have just had literally a record-breaking wet spring. I know it feels like summer. Technically, it's still spring. Whatever whatever we want to call June. <laughs> and so all the weeds, all the grass are growing super fast. None of my vegetables in my vegetable garden are growing fast because there's not enough sunlight. So I popped out and thought, okay, I am going to mow this lawn. But I want to talk a little bit about my learning curve, learning to mow my lawn and take care of my lawn and tend to it. Because as a woman, no one ever taught me how to take care of my lawn at all. Like no one ever mentioned anything about it. I remember when I moved into this house thinking, oh my goodness, what kind of lawnmower should I get? You know, what are all these different types? I, I went in my like full spiral of, oh, what's the right choice? There's so many kind of panic modes and, and really had to like come at it from a total novice standpoint of what kind of mowing, what kind of trimming edges, what kind of fertilizer do I need? What kind of seed? You know, how do I take care of this lawn? And it was something that there were a lot of topics out there uh, by men for men that kind of already had basic knowledge. And I had none. I had zip. So the first thing I learned was, you know, which kind of mower do I want, right? I went with a, an electric mower because I have sensitive little delicate wimpy lungs with my asthma. And I didn't want to do anything gas propelled. Um... So the electric maybe it doesn't have quite the power and strength of a gas, but it works pretty well. Um, I highly recommend if you do not want to push heavy stuff up a hill, get a self-propelled lawnmower. My mower does self-propel, and I don't generally self-propel it downhill unless I'm really tired. <laughs> but uphill, it makes a huge difference in being able to do this incline in my backyard because my backyard's kind of got a, a pretty steep incline, and it it needs a self-propelled motor. Otherwise, I'm just kind of slipping in the wet mud that is my lawn currently. So that was the first thing I learned. Second thing I learned was, you know, you really you need a good weed whacker that also will do trimming. So I also bought a battery operated one for that. I'll do a separate video on that. I'll show you kind of some of my trimming things. Um, I just use it really basically. There's different tools you can buy that each do a small different thing. I bought a really general purpose weed whacker that helps me also trim all the edges on my lawn around things. So this spring I started um, really trying to figure out how to take care of my lawn because it was in bad shape. Um, when Pear was a newborn last summer, I had hired somebody to come mow my lawn for me because I just, I hadn't even gotten the all clear from my doctor to be able to mow the lawn. So I thought, okay, I'll, you know, I'll do this help this summer because I'm really busy with a newborn, which was glorious, but they treated my lawn horribly. Um, and so my lawn had never looked worse than this spring when it should have been looking awesome. And even last fall, it just looked so bad. So part of it is I will put the clippings right back on the lawn. Um, I don't have the bag attachment attached to it unless it's really thick. And then I will put that in a little compost pile. Um, so that just naturally helps fertilize it. I will leave some loose leaves in the winter to decay and fertilize. And then this summer I reseeded with a bunch of clover, which is a personal preference. I prefer clover lawns to grass lawns. Um, because they're a little bit easier to maintain. And personally, I really love the texture of a clover lawn. There's just something glorious about that little thick clover underneath your feet. Oh, I love it. I do trim it down um, so that it doesn't flower up as much because I don't want to be stepping on bees with the kids, but I love clover lawns. So I re um, reseeded the area. I just bought one of those little seed distributors that we you can get at any hardware store. I noticed they sell them a lot in the springtime, so buy them now biscuits while it's summertime because sometimes I haven't been able to find them, at least locally in western Washington, come like fall and winter. There's just nowhere to get them, and then you have to pay shipping for something ridiculous. Right? It's these little small things that we don't think about that maybe for me, I was just never taught. I didn't have a dad that ever mowed the lawn, um, and certainly nobody that ever like 
gave me lessons and how do you mow the lawn? How do you get straight lines? You know, what, cur- cause I'm somebody that'll just be like, Oh, curvy lines in the lawn. And so, you know, I've been practicing my straight lines, which as you can tell, um, are, you know, it's more of like an abstract painting versus perhaps a gorgeous detailed Renaissance painting. Just, just, you know, mm-hmm, that's my style. <laughs> Definitely, boy, you can see how long this grass was. It's crazy. I have to mow again. Um, I'm trying to be good and mow regularly, but let's be honest. Life gets busy, and sometimes you just need to mow when you can. I have a grumpy HOA. I don't know if you biscuits live in an HOA. Tell me in the comments if you do. We can suffer together. But my HOA is very picky about how long weeds and lawn and everything's allowed to get. Um... They don't like nonconformity. That's very difficult for my brain to wrap itself around. <laughs> okay, I am going to keep going and keep mowing for a little bit, and I'll pop back on here with some more of my tips. Okay, biscuits, I'm back. I didn't know how long you wanted me to just blabber on about lawn stuff. You can tell I'm not an expert at all. Um, I bought those shoes. In fact, I think this is on this channel. I don't think it's on my main channel. Um, I did a haul on all my outdoor care stuff that I had, and I had those fun little shoes with the spikes that kind of oxygenate your lawn and allow it to drain better, and that was so much fun, and that really helped my lawn be so much healthier. But I am not claiming to be an expert. I'm sharing my tips. I know I'll get some snarky comments like, oh, this is a horrible tip. This is what's worked for me. Things that I need to know. Um, I definitely time when I'm going to mow the lawn so that I stay cool because I overheat mowing, mowing all the stuff. But I love taking care of my lawn. I love having a beautiful lawn that I know I tended to, that I fertilized, I trimmed. You know, I did all the right stuff for. It's fun to look at it and go, oh, I took care. You know, I feel, I feel happy about that. And something that motivated me to pop on here and film this was, I don't know, the week I filmed this, I had talked to two or three women separately. I guess it's grass mowing season. And I was mentioning, oh, yeah, I got to mow this or, oh, I'm doing this gardening. And none of them knew anything about mowing lawns. Like, they don't mow their lawns. Either their husband does it or they hire somebody out. And, like, some of them didn't even own a lawnmower. Like, they had no, they had no idea if it came to how to take care of a lawn at all. How to even mow it. It didn't even cross their minds that they should know this. And I love, as a parent, teaching my kids through example that, you know, it's good to know how to take care of the things in your life, which includes your yard. It's why I'm into gardening, regenerative agriculture. It's why I do this stuff about lawn care. Uh, I want to I wanna pop on and say, um, so one of the problems for me for this electric lawnmower is that it does... Um, overheat really easily with this grass and not even like tall grass like this. This is the tallest grass I've ever pushed it through, but just like I would say a week and a half, two weeks worth of lawn growth in the springtime, it will overheat and you have to really clear it out. Um, so my rule of thumb is always when you're going to do this, take out the battery so that it cannot turn on. Or if there's a safety switch and you have a gas mower, always have the safety switch on, always have the battery out so that these blades cannot turn on. Because I don't need a squirrel jumping on the on buttons, which would be really hard to do because it's a double action thing to turn it on. But for safety, like I really aim for safety in this and I try to teach safety through example. So always take that battery out. I've actually found like little gentle plastic shovels help me kind of get the stuck on grass um, off and then I'll mow around it and then I'll kind of rake it off, scoot it off into the compost pile so that it doesn't kill the grass underneath. Uh, but you just got to kind of accept that, at least for me, for this electric lawn mower, it's a good mower, but you do have to like regularly stop and clean it out because it just fills up. It doesn't, it doesn't redistribute the grass clippings as well as I would like. And so, Hey, that was something when I bought this mower, I didn't even know to look for because nobody told me 
I remember asking a couple other people, like, what do you look for in a lawnmower, you know? Because I knew so little about it. And no one ever mentioned that that's important to know, you know, how does it distribute and shoot out the grass clippings? Like, is it going to get stuck in that blade? Um, but yeah, this, this shovel literally came in a kit for sand castles from Costco. So they have them there now if you want to grab it. It's a really handy little shovel. <laughs> it works perfectly for cleaning out the mower. So then once you have all the mower parts cleaned, ready to go, I try to do pretty regularly cleaning maintenance of my mower, you know, just keep it tidy. Um, I probably need to take better care of it than I do. Biscuits, if you have good recommendation for uh, maintenance on electric lawnmowers, let me know. I would love to hear from you because that is an area that I'm trying to learn more about that I would like to know. Okay, now I'm putting on my music on my phone. Motivation, maybe my number one importance for lawn mowing is I've got to enjoy what what I'm doing. So if I'm not a big fan of lawn mowing, I'm going to put on some fun music. I'm going to dance to it and just have a good time, kind of zone out and enjoy my lawn mowing with my headphones in. Alrighty Biscuits, I will see you in the next video. I hope that if you needed to be inspired to mow your lawn, boom, this gets you out today. And if you wanted to have a little bit of, is it information, t things that I have discovered and you can laugh at me for not knowing, <laughs> I hope that this helps you because boy, there is just stuff that we don't get told, right? It's crazy and it's important to know these really basic, simple things. I will see you over on Patreon for all of my fabulous burlesque self-care. Don't forget to sign up this month before the month is over because we have some really cool June content coming out. We have some kind of Hugo Forest fairy woodland themes that are just delightful. And I will see you over on Instagram.